Hey everyone, welcome back to yoga. My name is Ashley. Today we're actually doing a remake rework sequence of one that I did about six months ago as a Zoom class. And the recording's actually still up here on YouTube called Yoga for the Feet. And um, yeah, I wanted to create an updated version of this class that's higher quality, sounds better, looks better, um, and even just kind of rework the sequence a little bit as well. This class is going to be about one half to three quarters of the way basic postures, but there's going to also be a few more advanced postures to attempt, not necessarily to attain today or anything, but just to kind of get a feel for and maybe see how close we can get into these poses. You will be needing one block or something similar and one thick fabric thing like a blanket. I have a sarape and it's like what we usually use for yoga blankets. And whenever you grab whatever you're gonna grab for your blanket type of a thing, go ahead and roll it up like I'm doing here into a tight roll that would be wider than the width of your legs if your legs were hip distance, like this. So without further ado, we're going to be doing more yoga for the feet. Let's go ahead and get started. Feel free to close your eyes or gaze at a point out in front of you and connect to your breath. Just become aware of the state of your mind, your thoughts, your emotions, even your physical body. And just creating a sense of awareness within yourself. Acknowledging yourself just as you are. Setting the intention now to not necessarily go full force into every posture, but to just go where you need to go today. Even if that means not as deep as usual, or maybe that means deeper than usual. Take a few more rounds of deep belly breathing. And gently open your eyes. Please come into Downward Facing Dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Make sure that your hands are fingers spread wide, index finger knuckle pushing down, gripping the floor with all 10 fingertips and pushing your inner edges of your hands down. Curl your toes under, lift your knees up. Now before you go into straight legs, immediately bend your knees a lot then rotate your inner thighs back and wide, like you're trying to pull your leg bones away from each other. Then push your hands down and forward, lift your upper arm bones away from the floor, and then reach your ribs to your thighs. And even here, you'll be getting a toe stretch, bottom of the foot stretch. You can totally hang out here or work your legs to or toward straight. Maybe taking heels all the way to the floor for a calf stretch. You'll notice that there will be a lot of not only footwork, but lower leg work as well. The calves and shins can often be responsible for foot issues, so not just the feet. And just feel the backs of your legs growing longer. Even in this down dog, flare your toes as wide apart as you can. We call that yoga toes. <laughs> Couple more breaths. And slowly take your knees down to the floor for Vajrasana Thunderbolt Pose. Bring your knees and your ankles together, curl your toes under, and then slide your knees back toward your toes until they don't slide back anymore. Now walk your hands back toward your knees and then have a seat on your feet. You might need to stay down on your hands or if you can go all the way to hips to heels, maybe take your hands up to your thighs and just sit here. You're more than welcome to add the arms or keep your hands here 
Interlacing fingers in front of your heart, clamp your fingers closed, then pull your elbows wide. Keep that as you press your palms toward the ceiling. Reach tall through your sternum, whether you're doing arms or not, and then root down through your sitting bones into your heels. Even act as though you're trying to flick your toes back toward the wall behind you so the bottoms of your feet are engaged. And take your hands down to the floor, lean forward, then flip onto the tops of your feet, squeeze your knees and ankles in, very important. So you wanna to tone your outer shin muscles to help keep your inner ankles together. And then sit down on your heels, stretching to the tops of the feet. Again, you can hang out hands on thighs, or you can add in a rounded spine, interlacing your fingers behind your back, squeeze your shoulder blades toward each other, then work your arms toward straight. You could stay here or round your spine, this time keeping your heels and hips together, only rounding forward as much as you can keep your hips glued to your heels and without low back pain. Maybe take forehead to knees, or you can also do forehead in front of knees if that's too much of a round. Keep moving your shoulders away from the floor if you're in this posture and extend your knuckles up toward the ceiling. Stay connected to your breath. Inhale, slowly come back up, then lower your hands to the floor. Now you're gonna need your blanket roll. So grab your blanket roll, your towel, or whatever you have, and then stand up. Stand up more toward the back of your mat. And then from here, take your blanket roll. You're gonna place it behind your knees. I learned this a long time ago from my teachers and I really love it. It stayed with me forever. Bend your knees with the blanket behind you and then quickly place your hands on the floor. Now, for more intensity, lift your heels up to balance more on the balls of your feet and then walk your hands back. And then just balance on your toes and on your fingers and breathe here for several breaths. You may or may not feel some pressure behind your calves and your hamstrings. What we're doing here is kind of a deep tissue massage with these exercises. Then walk your hands more forward. Then take your knees to the floor and flip to the tops of your feet, keeping your blanket where it is. And then from here, just shifting a little bit of weight back in toward your heels. You can hold here, or again, you can elevate yourself up onto your knees. The higher up you go, and when you take your hands off the floor, it's gonna put more weight into your legs, which will definitely amp up the intensity. Just make sure you're not holding your breath. Holding the breath is counterintuitive. It'll tighten you up rather than open you up. So really focus on slow, steady breaths, letting go of any muscle tension that is not serving this pose. So let go of your shoulders, let go of your neck tension, let go of the space between your eyebrows if you're holding tension there, even your jaw. And just really focus on softening your calves rather than resisting it. Leaning into the discomfort, unless it's excruciating, then don't lean into it. Then lean forward just a little bit, slide the blanket roll back to the middle of your calf, and then sit back down. And again, you can have hands down or hands up on your thighs, maybe even closing your eyes and just feeling into whatever you're feeling, just leaning into it. One of my favorite things that one of my favorite writers and teachers has said, her name's Pema Chodron, and she says to lean into the sharp places. And she's talking a lot about emotions and thoughts. So leaning into what is uncomfortable for the purpose of understanding and learning, not for the purpose of making ourselves suffer necessarily, but just to get to know and acknowledge that way, once we process, we can, in fact, let go. So it no longer resides within us and no longer has to stay there to create any more stress for ourselves. 
and switch to one more roll down so it's just above your heels and then sit back. You may find that one of those positions with the blanket are worse than the others and that's totally normal. And then lean forward. Take the blanket roll out from behind your knees and just put it out in front of you. We'll come back to it in a moment. Now take your feet. So you're gonna turn your right foot in and then take your left foot, the hard part, right to the inner heel and then slide it down into your inner arch and then walk your knees as close together as feels comfortable. They can be separated hip distance. And then just like you did when you were on your blanket roll, you're gonna lean back. Again, maybe keeping more weight in your hands to start. Maybe eventually taking your hands up on your thighs. Going for a foot smash now. You want that hard part of the top of your left foot to push into the soft, tender part of your right arch. And then switch sides. Doing the same thing, just turning your left foot in and take your right foot on top of your left arch and have a seat. If your foot starts to cramp up like mine is right now, you can curl one of the top toes under if that's the one that's cramping and sit back on it for a moment. And then try again to sit back on the arch. Sometimes the foot will either cramp up because either we're deficient in potassium, which is the first thing people think of, or the foot will cramp up because it's not used to being worked in this way. So the muscles are just kind of getting used to this kind of work and discomfort. So the more you practice this, possibly the less you'll cramp up in your feet. So just practice patience with yourself. Acknowledge your efforts if you're not able to last as long in the positions. Always feel free to come out before I say. All right, then come off of your foot. Make sure your blanket roll is still in a nice roll. And then take one foot at a time, so you're aiming the ball of your foot to the blanket roll and your heel on the floor. And then do the same thing with your other foot. Now, when you're in a forward fold like this, I always tell people to bend your knees so that your ribs and thighs touch. This makes it safer for your spine. I don't want you to do this because this puts too much pressure and weight on the spine and can cause some damage, cause some harm. So bend your knees, at least at first, and then lean forward you can have hands on blanket or hands in front of you on the, on the floor, maybe leaning more weight forward into the balls of your feet, but do push more through your heels as if you're trying to drag your heels down and apart. You might feel that all the way up your outer calves and the backs of your calves. Now you can totally hang out here or if you can keep ribs to thighs, straighten your legs. Not necessarily aiming the forehead towards the shins, but just keeping the head more neutral here. Really just focusing all of your energy and attention into your feet and into the backs of your legs, maybe even all the way up into your hamstrings and hips. Then take your hands up to your hips. Bend your knees a little bit to stand up. Okay, step off of your blanket roll and just Kick it out in front of you or somewhere out of the way. And then stand on your mat with your feet together. You can also have your feet hip distance for mountain pose. 
Just like any pose, mountain pose is an actual pose. So really make it a pose by putting all of your awareness, your attention into it, all your energy into this posture. Pushing more through your inner feet, flare your toes, move your shoulders back, and then as you root through your legs, lengthen through your spine, move your ribs back, tailbone forward, and then move your shoulders back again. Stay like this, palms out beside your thighs, pointing in, but not touching your thighs. Just take a moment here, rooting down into the ground. Tree pose, Vrkshasana. Take your right foot anywhere along the inner edge of your left leg, as long as you're not pushing into your knee. We're really focusing on the standing foot, but do focus as much attention on your lifted leg as well by pushing that foot into your leg, wherever it is on your leg. As you can see here, I've got tippy toes to the floor. This is really great if you're not quite there with balancing on one leg. You can also go up just below the knee. We're gonna go up so that your heel is more towards your groin or your inner thigh crease. You gotta push your foot and thigh into each, other, into each other equally. As you push down through your inner thigh crease all the way into your big toe mound of your bottom leg. Place your palms wherever you're comfortable. You can have palms in front of your heart, prayer pose, or you can reach your arms all the way up over your head, totally up to you. Now your bottom foot, flare the toes, Push more through the inner edge of your feet, then push as much through the ball of your foot as you are through your heel. Now remember where your foot was on top of this foot when you were doing the foot smash. Lift your arch up away from the floor, that same space that you were pressing so much into with the foot smash. Yeah. It's a lot of work for the foot. Then lower your foot. Switch sides to the other side, taking your left foot anywhere along the inner edge of your right leg. Push your foot into your leg, leg into your foot equally, getting that stability here. And then from the inner thigh crease of your standing leg, push through that standing foot, especially the ball of your foot, palms in front of your heart. Now flare your right toes, push evenly through the ball of your foot and heel, and lift your inner arch of your foot away from the floor. Really hone in and pay attention to what's going on in that standing foot. Really understand what the muscles are doing or trying to do. Is your arch falling or trying to fall? Try to resist it falling. And if it's already a fallen arch, really just focus on lifting or even just visualizing it lifting away from the floor. Okay, lower your foot. All right, so, Bring your feet together, bend your knees, and then again, you're gonna do the same thing with your feet, so make sure you're paying attention to your standing feet. Keep your right leg firmly planted into the floor, then cross your left knee on top of your right knee. From here, squeeze shin to shin, flare your lifted toes, and then squeeze that shin back as if you're gonna try to cross your foot behind your calf. You do not have to do that. But if you can, without hurting your knee, then cross your foot behind your calf. If your foot's behind your calf, you can start to work your top of your ankle toward the back of your calf. Then place your palms either in front of your heart or add the arms, right arm under your left arm, hold shoulders, join backs of hands or palms. And try to balance. <laughs> balance can be even trickier when you're focusing more on the standing foot, ironically. Stand up, arms by your side. All right, bend your knees. You're gonna do the same thing, only crossing your right knee over your left knee. Flare your right toes, squeeze your shin in. Maybe hook your foot, but don't have to. Again, push through your standing leg, flare your standing toes and press through your heel and your ball of your foot. Keep your arch lifting, palms either together in front of your heart or left arm over right arm. Squeeze elbows in, shoulders back, lengthen through your torso, sit deeper through your legs, and just breathe. Good. 
Stand up. Arms by your side, mountain pose as a pose. Use it as a neutralizing posture, really breathing into it. Using it to ground and recenter. Turn to face the long edge of your mat and then take a wide stance, lining up your wrists and your ankles. And then take your hands back to your hips. Turn your toes in just a little bit so your heels are a little bit wider than your pinky toe. Now again, pay attention to your inner arches. You're gonna push through the balls of your feet, especially the inner ball of your foot and your heel, and then lift your inner arches away from the floor. So you can't really see it probably from there, but I'm really working my inner arches away from the floor more than usual. Now lean forward and fold between your legs. Prasarda Padottanasana. Place hands either under your shoulders, arms straight, or walk your hands further back. Maybe bend your elbows, reach heart first, head last between your legs. Even though you're adding all this extra stuff into this posture, like paying attention to your torso, your head, your shoulders, don't forget to pay attention to your feet. Keep your attention there. Yoga is all about layering the awareness. So we're typically starting with the awareness of one or a few alignment cues. And then over time, we start to be able to add it up. And we're able to start becoming more aware of multiple alignment cues at once. You'll even notice in this posture, possibly your outer calves and your outer shins will be working extra hard to keep your arches lifting up. Your whole lower leg, your thighs, your hamstrings, all of that jazz, they're all working really hard together as a network to keep your arches lifting. Next inhale, lengthen your spine, take hands on hips, shoulders back and stand up. Bring your fingertips in front of your heart, bend your knees, step or jump your feet together and your arms by your side. All right, turn and face the short edge of your mat and then step to about the last third of your mat and then step your right foot forward three quarters of the way. <laughs> and now from here, take your hands on your hips, move your right hip back and your left hip forward to square your hips up. Now push through both legs evenly, push them down and apart. Again, lift your inner arches of your feet up away from the floor as you push the ball of your right foot down, flare your toes. Push the ball of your left foot down, flare your toes. Push evenly through your heels, inner and outer heel. Keep all of that length and strength. Push your hips forward, hands into your hips, lift up through your sternum and maybe do an upper back back bend. You can always just keep your spine straight. Then lean forward, fold halfway. Feel free to bend your front knee to reach your hands to the floor. You can also use blocks under your hands, totally cool. Lengthen your spine again. Then fold heart first, head last, toward your leg. Again, notice as you folded, did you forget about your feet? Flare your toes, push the balls of your feet down. It'll get so annoying to like keep coming back to the feet, but come back to the feet. Breathe. Next inhale, lengthen your spine, hands on hips, shoulders back and stand up. Then turn on your mat, turn right toes in sharply, turn your left toes out. Square your hips toward your left leg, move left hip back, right hip forward, flare your toes, engage your feet, push inner big toe mound down, inner heel down, but push just as much through the outer heel and the pinky toe mound. Keep all that strength, push hips forward, lift through your sternum, move your shoulders back for the back bend or just lengthen your spine. Don't hold your breath. Then throw yourself forward, fold halfway forward. Feel free to bend your standing knee or your left knee to reach the floor. Use props as necessary. 
Keep your hips square, feet engaged, thighs toned, kneecaps lifting. Maybe take forehead toward your knee. For me, whenever I'm paying attention to the rest of the pose, what happens is my back foot arch will start to fall. So we really gotta like focus to keep that arch lifting. It's back there and we're not super aware of it all the time because it's in the back <laughs> until maybe we look back and see it like, oh, hello, you fell and then re-engage. Inhale, lengthen. Hands on hips, shoulders back, stand up. Turn your toes in. Step or jump your feet together. Come in a downward facing dog. Your legs are probably exhausted by now from doing all that work. Now we're gonna do some stretching and working the other side of the foot more. Pigeon prep, take your right knee behind your right wrist. Point your right toes to the left and slightly back. Then lower your back knee to the floor in line with your right heel and slide your left knee back a little bit more. From here, you can stay upright totally fine or fold forward for a few breaths. Just hang out here and breathe. Notice your back foot. Oftentimes it'll turn in toward the right so you wanna to tone your outer shin to point your toes straight back. And then push the top of your back foot into the floor and flare your toes. So you're working the opposite side of the foot now than we've been working already. Now flare your right toes, the one in front, even though they're kind of squished on the floor probably, you can still work them toward flare or work those muscles. And then push through the top and outer edge of your right foot, and then keep your right inner arch engaged and lifting. Stay working here or lift your torso. You can stay working here or take right hand in front of your right shin, bend your back knee, keep your toes active, your foot engaged on your back foot. Take your left hand back behind you to grab your inner arch. Now push your foot into your hand and pull your hand back into your foot. Keep that engagement as you pull your heel toward your hip. Then turn your elbow up, maybe even turn your fingers forward. Now, as you'll see, my hand is going over my toes. So you wanna push your toes back into your hand to strengthen the top muscles of the toes um, and of the feet in general. So you push against the hand and the hand against the foot at the same rate so you have an even stretch and an even engagement. Lower your foot. Second side pigeon pose. You can either go from down dog or all fours. Left knee forward. Slide your right knee back. Make sure your right knee is in line with your left heel. Then point the top of your foot to the floor on your back leg. And again, engage your outer right shin muscles so that your right toes point straight back. And fold forward. Take some breaths here. Don't forget about your front foot, flare your toes, or do like you're flaring your toes. Push your pinky toe edge of your left foot down. Squeeze your legs toward each other. Keep the engagement, keep breathing. Stay here or lift your torso, left hand in front of your shin, bend your back knee, reach back for your right arch, push your foot and hand against each other equally. Keep that, then maybe pull heel toward your hip, bend your right elbow, and then maybe turn your fingers over your toes. And again, push your toes into your hand as much as your hand is pushing into your toes. Lower your foot. 
our dog. Use your down dog to stretch your legs, stretch your calves, your hamstrings, flare your toes. Reconnect with your breath. We're making our way down to the floor. Lower your knees to the floor. Grab your block on the way. Now take your block so that it's sitting like this at the back of your mat, and then sit on your block, taking your legs out in front of you. You can also use a blanket if the block is too hard, totally fine. You can also put a blanket on top of the block for cushion. Now from here we're going into Trang Mukai Kapata Pashimochanasana. That's a mouthful. This is half Virasana, seated. So lean onto your right hip and then flip your left heel to your hip. And then point your toes and then take your shin and the top of your foot to the floor. So from here you want to squeeze your legs in. If you are uncomfortable here or you cannot get your knee down, maybe try elevating your hips a little bit higher. So from here, you're gonna do the same thing you did with your pigeon foot that was in the back. You're gonna push the top of your foot down and then you're gonna tone your outer shin so that your foot points straight back and your inner heel presses into your thigh or in that direction. Keep your spine long. You can totally hang out upright or add a little bit extra by folding forward for more of a hamstring stretch on your right leg and breathe here. And slowly come back up. Lean onto your right to flip your left leg forward. Lean to your left to flip your right leg back. Top of foot and shin to the floor. And again, do all that same work. Push more through the top of your right foot and then engage your right outer shin so that your toes point straight back. Flare your toes and breathe here. Again, you can stay upright or fold forward. Go slow, mindfully, and just go where you can go. Go wherever helps you feel the most open and expansive rather than contracted. And slowly come back up. Flick your right leg forward. Dandasana. Flare your toes, tone your thighs, lift your kneecaps. Take a moment here. All right, come off of your block. Just set it to the side, you'll come back to it later. For a half cow face, keep your left leg as it is. Pull your right heel toward your right hip. Lean back and then just slide your right foot over your left thigh. Try to keep clamping your heel toward your hip for the safety of your knee joint. You don't want to have your foot like this because this creates instability in the knee joint. So if your leg is like this, make sure that you are clamping it toward your hip to tone your hamstring, which will stabilize the knee. Then turn your hip down so your knee points forward. Keep clamping your heel toward your hip. I like to just glue my left wrist to my right ankle and just keep it there so that it doesn't move. Now from here, squeeze your legs toward each other. Now pay attention to your right foot here. Flare your toes, push the outer edge of your foot into the floor, and so you're still engaging this outer shin muscle. Then keep your left leg engaged, flare your toes, tone your thighs, lift your kneecap. Keep that, maybe fold forward. When you fold forward, you might notice a pressure of your shin pushing into your left uh, quad and or your IT band. This is normal and this can be quite beneficial if you have foot tightness related to tightness in your IT band, which is totally possible. 
It's all connected. Take a full breath in and slowly sit up. Extend your right leg forward, flare your toes, tone your thigh, and lift your kneecap. Pull your left knee in. Keep your heel clamping toward your hip to keep your hamstring strong, all that good work. Then slide your foot outside your right hip. Clamp and squeeze your knees in. Maybe use your right hand to hold your left foot in place. And again, you can stay here or slowly fold forward. Hand can be wherever comfortable, maybe grabbing onto your foot. And just hang out here. Slowly come back up. Take your left leg straight ahead. Layer your toes, tone your thighs, lift your kneecaps. All right, then cross your ankles, flip over onto all fours, tabletop. Full cow face pose, take your right leg straight back. Cross your knee behind your left knee, squeeze shin to shin. Then walk your hands back toward your knees. You can just like calf smash, keep your hands on the floor. You can even use your block out in front of you to lift yourself a little bit. You can change the position of the block, or maybe just take your hands to your thigh, maybe palms in front of your heart. You can also do the arms. If you know the arms, it would be right arm up. And just breathe. Again, pay special attention to your feet. Both of the tops of the feet are stretching and working really hard right now to hold you up. As you can see, balance is not easy here. All right, come out. From all fours, left leg straight back. Swing your shin behind your other shin. Walk your hands back, maybe take your block with you. And then slowly elevate yourself to whatever capacity is best for you in the moment. Squeeze your shins in. You're also kind of doing a calf smash here and a hamstring smash here. And come out, downward facing dog. Here come some weird poses. These are Virasana hero pose variations as in light on yoga. Um, he outlines a few different variations you can do to help yourself get a deeper virasana to also help your feet and your knees. It's very important to do these postures correctly without pain. If you start to feel pain, please do come out um, or modify so that it doesn't feel excruciating. So I'm going to show you from this angle what we're going to do. You're going to have this block just back behind you ready for your bottom to go back on it. Now you're going to come up onto your hands and lift your knees up. Now you're gonna turn your toes in and you might just do one at a time like this or do them both at the same time and bring your knees close together. Lower your knees to the floor. And then you're gonna sit back on your block and you hold that and you keep your feet engaged pushing into the floor. If you feel pain, you might feel it in the inner ankle and then if you feel pain, again, come out. This might not be good for you to do. It's always good to know these things about ourselves, whether or not a posture is beneficial or harmful for us. And so when we figure that kind of stuff out, it actually makes us more advanced practitioners. So I don't believe that being in 
like the deepest form of every pose makes a person an advanced practitioner. I think it's more about knowing how best to take care of your body and your practice, what works and what does not work for you. So it becomes more empowering as a practice. And you're gonna come out of this and then come into Dandasana real quick. Feet out in front of you, flare your toes, turn your thighs, lift your kneecaps. And then we're gonna set up again. So this one you aren't really gonna need a block for because if you cannot come all the way down, you're just gonna hold yourself up with your hands for the stretch. You're gonna do the same thing, lifting your knees up. This time, tippy toes of your big toes are together. You might stay there, bring your knees together, down on the floor, and then you're cupping your bottom with your feet. So then you hold that. You can also, if you did need something for yourself, take your blanket back there, just for some extra lift. Just take some breaths. And then come out carefully. Dandasana. There's one more of these weird ones and it looks like this. Just like foot smash, you're gonna turn your bottom toes in, but different from uh, foot smash is you're gonna take the entire top of your top foot to the entire bottom of your bottom foot. Technically, the knees are supposed to be together and I cannot do that. So my knees are pretty wide. And so you sit back and you just hold, you wanna push the top of your bottom foot down and push the top of your top foot down. It's not my favorite, it's not the most comfortable. Just kind of dip in and then come out. And then you're gonna switch sides, taking right foot, turning it in. Then left foot on. If you don't have flexible ankles, if you're like me, then this might just be like one of those postures that we just don't get in our lifetime. And that's fine. And then come out. Oh, come into a down dog. <laughs> That's so fun, right? Tone your thighs, lift your kneecaps. This next pose is called Vama Devasana. Right knee forward, just like pigeon pose. Then take your left knee to the floor and then come all the way into your pigeon pose. You can just do pigeon pose and pigeon quad stretch again. That's totally fine, totally uh, workable here. Similar shape, but slightly different. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your left hand to your right ankle and pull your heel close to your groin, and then try to get your knee to point straight ahead on your mat. So you're leaning back on your right hip. Now lock your back knee in line with your front knee so this is no longer pigeon shape. Now from here, you can lean back on your right hand, bend your back knee and grab your foot if it's available, and pull heel toward your hip. Now again, it's important imperative to push your foot back into your hand, your toes back into your hand, so you're not overstraining those tendons. From here, you can flip your fingers over your toes. From here, if you can balance, lean a little forward, then grab onto your bottom foot with your right hand. This is where it gets a little weird. So think, slide your knees toward each other to try to get your feet to touch. And that's all I'm gonna say, ready, <laughs> set, go. Oh. My feet don't touch. They might look like they're close, but they're not. And then you look to your right or your left. I think classical is toward your back knee, if I'm not mistaken. And then lower down. That was the most advanced posture for the day. And then you're gonna come back into down dog. 
And then to the other side, left knee forward. Set up for pigeon if you're going to pigeon, and maybe to quad stretch. Or start to pull your left heel toward your left hip, point your left knee straight ahead, and then start to walk your right knee in line with your left knee. Lean onto your left hip, left hand. Then from here, bend your right knee, grab onto your foot. And then just start to pull heel and hip toward each other. Maybe balance on your hip. Grab your left foot with your left hand. And then in one movement, squeeze your knees toward each other. Try to touch your soles of your feet. <laughs> Such a weird pose. And lower down. Down dog. <laughs> Tone your thighs, lift your kneecaps. Last weird pose. I've made it more doable by grabbing a block. This pose looks super funny in the camera. It's gonna look just like I'm balancing on my feet, but rest assured there is a block under my bottom. I'm gonna take the block behind you and sit on it. So my block is on the tall setting. Now from here, I'm gonna have my hands on the floor. I'm gonna start wiggling my feet closer to each other. Now, bring the big toe edges of your feet together and then turn your toes out. You might be able to use one hand to slide your foot more underneath your hip and then use your other hand to do the same thing and try to point your heels straight up toward your uh, place between places and then extend your knees out wide if you can balance here, bring your palms in front of your heart. Yeah. And come on out. Oh, gracefully. Take your legs straight out in front of you. Dandasana. Walk your hips back a little bit so your flesh is even under your legs. Tone your thighs, lift your kneecaps, and flare your toes. Feet either hip distance or together, come into a forward fold. Always feel free to bend your knees so your rib cage and your thighs meet before you round. Push through your feet as you lengthen your spine, as you fold. Next inhale, come back up. Slide onto your back. One bridge pose. Place your elbows underneath you. Walk your shoulders in toward your spine. Push your head back, lift your chin out of your chest. Push your feet down to lift your hips. Grab onto your outer mat or bind your hands underneath you. And then walk your shoulders in again. Keep your chin lifting the whole time. Press through your inner feet, lift through your outer hips. Just as a way to re-neutralize the pelvis if any of the forward folds bothered you. Release your hands, lower your hips. Take your feet wide and then let your knees Go back and forth from the left to the right, side to side, windshield wipers rolling over your outer hips. Take in some deep breaths. Acknowledge your efforts. Even if you didn't get into the full form of some of the postures today, you still were working your feet really hard, so that's enough. That can be good enough. Come back to neutral. Happy baby, reach around, grab your outer feet or wherever you can grab on. Push your feet toward the ceiling, pull your hands down toward the floor and maybe rock side to side. Recline child's pose. 
Wrap your arms around your legs. Give yourself a hug. Just take some deep breaths here. Maybe continue your rocking motion. Eventually finding your way into Shavasana or seated meditation. Try to rest for at least five minutes and then gently enter into the rest of your day. Thank you so much for practicing today. Have a wonderful rest of your day.